As I mentioned in the video on crude oil, most of the fractions we get um, from fractional distillation can actually be used as fuels. And so the vast majority of fuels we use are hydrocarbons. Um, so we're going to talk about their combustion, the reactions of burning them, um, two types of combustion, then about some problems that might cause and possible alternatives or solutions to that. So the first type of combustion we're going to talk about is complete combustion. Okay. In complete combustion, we are going to fully react um, the fuel and burn it in air. And when we do that, we're actually going to be reacting it with oxygen. Now, I actually, again, find it easier here to think about the atoms that are involved. So um, actually, uh, by writing out the chemical formulae and working out um, what you produce, if you're struggling to remember. So let's just pick a really, really simple one. Let's pick methane, which is, um, as we said in the last video, going to have one carbon atom, four hydrogens. If I react this with lots and lots and lots of oxygen, have a think about the products you could make. Okay, what is actually going to happen? The carbon will um, combine with oxygen, um, as much oxygen as possible, and you're actually going to make CO2, carbon dioxide, and the hydrogens will, um, or hydrogen will combine with oxygen, and you will get water. We then need to balance this equation. So let's have a look. Um, at the moment, we have got four hydrogen atoms on this side, we've only got two on that side, so I'm going to have to double the waters up on this side. Um, I've now got one, two, three, four oxygen atoms on this side, only two on this side, so I'll just need that a, two, um, a two there as well. And that is now balanced. So that's it um, using simple equations. In general, any time you're burning any hydrocarbon, you are always going to get um, this reaction. So you're going to get your fuel. Now, it does not matter at all what it is, if it's kerosene or octane or, or um, anything. As long as it's a hydrocarbon, you're always going to get your fuel reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So don't let the question confuse you. Generally, when you are asked um, what, what you know, asked to write a word equation for reaction of, of a hydrocarbon burn, com complete combustion of a hydrocarbon, you're generally going to get carbon dioxide and water. However, there is another second type of combustion I can have, which is incomplete combustion. Now, in this um, type of combustion, I'm actually going to have less oxygen. Um, so what that means is I won't have enough oxygen there to make um, both of these products. There's too much oxygen in. So what else could I produce? Okay, well, the first thing I could produce is carbon monoxide, which is CO. We're going to talk about some of the dangers of that in a minute. If I have even less oxygen, I'm going to get a C, okay, just carbon on its own, which is soot. Okay, so um, there's not kind of a, a, a definitive version of this because you could produce different ratios of these products. But let's just give, I'll try and work out an example. Let's pick, um, let's pick uh, ethane this time, which is C2H6. If I were to do incomplete combustion of ethane, let's just imagine I'm going to make some carbon, some carbon dioxide, and some water. Sorry, let's change this. Let's have carbon monoxide, sorry. Um, so I'm not sure if this is going to balance, but I've looked. I've got six hydrogens, so I'm going to put three there. And now I've got four oxygen atoms um, on the right-hand side. Um, so I'm going to put two there. Um, and I think that balances. If that was easy enough, I thought it was going to be, that's fine. So this would be an example of an incomplete combustion reaction, although there, there are lots of examples that you could have. Right. Um, I've already uh, alluded to the fact that there are some issues with these. Uh, so let's go through and pick out some of the issues or problems that are going to be associated with these. The first one, um, carbon dioxide, is one of the main contributors to global warming. What this means is that it will, uh, um, when the sun, uh, the sun's heat energy is reflected off the earth, it can be absorbed in the atmosphere by the carbon uh, dioxide gas. Okay, so. Um, Energy can be absorbed by these chemical bonds, which can then emit it back towards Earth. And it effectively acts like a blanket, trapping the heat energy from the sun in the Earth's atmosphere and causing the atmosphere to heat up. Um, carbon monoxide um, here is an even bigger problem because it is incredibly toxic. 
Okay, and the way it works is like this. Um, in your body, you need oxygen for respiration in your cells. If you imagine that an oxygen molecule looks a bit like that, it's O2. Okay, if to your body, carbon monoxide would look exactly the same. It's only very slightly different in size. So what carbon monoxide does is it attaches to your red blood cells, the hemoglobin in your red blood cells, and it will not come off them. Okay, so the carbon monoxide will get transported around your body and it effectively stops your cells from respiring. And it will very, very quickly kill you. It is, um, it's not got a scent, it's colourless, which means it's an incredibly dangerous gas. Uh, soot um, is black and it damages buildings. So soot uh, is effectively a, a, a black powder. Okay, it can damage buildings. It can lead to breathing problems. It can it can possibly lead to asthma or and coughs things like that. Um, and it is also leads to something called global dimming. And this is a big problem in um, big built up cities, particularly in say London and places like. Um, uh, some Chinese cities where there's too much soot in the atmosphere and it starts to um, absorb sunlight and can lead to global dimming. There is another issue with uh, burning hydrocarbons, which is uh, generally thought about when it comes to talking about coal. And that is that um, in most hydrocarbons, you have some sulfur in them as an impurity. So you have some sulfur impurities in most hydrocarbons. This isn't part of the um, um, of the molecules themselves, but there is some sulfur in there that you do not want. And what can happen is this. When you're burning your fuel, the sulfur can react with oxygen and it can form sulfur dioxide, SO2. If SO2 comes in contact with water, It will lead to acid rain. Okay, so it forms actually forms sulfuric acid when it comes in contact with water, uh, which can you know do things like uh, uh, kill trees and uh, corrode um, limestone, etc. Um, so that's a bit of an issue. So what we actually do to stop this is we try and neutralise this sulfur dioxide when it's produced. You don't need to know masses about this for AQA, but for Edexcel, you do need to know that we can use um, calcium carbonate. So neutralized by calcium carbonate um, in power station chimneys, and that stops SO2 being um, emitted. So two types of combustion, complete combustion, producing just carbon dioxide and water. Incomplete combustion with less oxygen, it's going to produce carbon monoxide gas and soot um, and you do need to know about some of, it, some of these issues. One further issue um, with any form of combustion of hydrocarbons is that most um, hydrocarbon fuels come from crude oil okay they are non-renewable and what that means is um, we, we're using them up much faster than they can be produced and therefore eventually they're going to run out. Um, so scientists uh, are coming up with more and more and more alternatives uh, to burning hydrocarbon fuels and one of the ones that we need to know about is actually using biofuels. So as the name implies these are biological fuels they come from um, animal and plant matter. Um, so what is what um, the idea is is that we can turn organic plant material into some form of fuel which you can then put into your cars, into your vehicles, used to produce electricity, etc. Um, and this is uh, supposedly beneficial for a number of reasons. The first one is that we can always grow more plants. We're never going to run out of plants because we can always regrow them, and therefore biofuels are considered to be renewable. Uh, a second advantage um, is actually to do with carbon dioxide levels. When plants grow, they absorb carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis, which then becomes stored inside the uh, plant material. And what that means is um, that you are effectively taking in as much carbon dioxide when you grow the plants as you release when you burn the fuel. 
Um, and the term that's used to describe that is carbon neutral. And that sounds great. However, when you um, are harvesting the plants, when you're um, um, when you yeah, when you when you're uh, planting seeds, when you're trying to turn into fuel, when they're transporting them, you are still going to be using other fuels for those processes. So actually, um, overall, we generally think of these process processes as not being carbon neutral, at least for the time being. Okay, so it sounds good in theory. However, overall, they're not carbon neutral. In addition, if you were a, a farmer, say in Brazil or, or, or somewhere, a very a very large amount of forest cover, it is very, very tempting to chop down all of your um, all of your trees, all of your forests, in order to grow fuels, um, sorry, grow plants which you can turn into biofuels and sell, which can lead to deforestation. Wow, I can't spell leads to deforestation in addition if you had a choice between growing um, crops for plants and growing crops for biofuels you may well be receiving more money to turn your crops into biofuels what that can do is mean that less food is produced which drives up food prices okay and eventually that could lead to things like famines um, etc etc um, so there are obvious upsides and downsides to this. Positives, biofuels are renewable. They're considered to be carbon neutral, although actually on the whole are they. However, they can lead to deforestation. It can drive food prices up. There are other ones that you can talk about, but that should be enough to uh, discuss and hopefully get you good marks.